Thanks very much. So uh, our next storyteller has actually uh, performed in 47 states and just recently added her 16th, 17th country actually, went down to Australia and New Zealand. So let's welcome Connie Reagan Blake. <laughs> Thank you, and thank you for that lovely introduction. <laughs> Ted said it couldn't have been better. You know, I first uh, met Ray in 1973 at the very first National Storytelling Festival. Saw him standing up on that stage. His hair seemed to kind of brush the clouds. He was so tall. And there were about 35 of us out in the audience sitting on folding chairs on a little side street right next to the county courthouse over in Jonesboro, Tennessee. That festival has grown to where now there's over 10,000 people that come to that festival. And like I said earlier, Ray really was integral in helping to grow that festival and to grow festivals all over. Back then, that was the only storytelling festival devoted, um, uh, focused totally on storytelling in the United States. Now every state in the Union has them. And a lot of states have, have as many as 8, 10, or 12 ongoing storytelling festivals. So a lot has happened. But I remember that day and how it impacted my life. Before long after meeting Ray, I started uh, uh, headed up to uh, Beach Mountain and uh, I had met Rosa that day as well, and I think we all just kind of fell in love. Barbara Freeman was there as well. And I started the first of many visits to sit on that porch or by the most unique wood stove in the whole wide world that Ray had built and listen to stories. Now, sometimes you'd go up to visit the Hicks, and Ray would start a story in the morning, and that afternoon he is still telling the same story. <laughs> now, this story I'm going to tell you isn't near as long as that. <laughs> but the way that you know it's over is when you hear, well, last I heard, Jack, him and his mom are doing right well. <laughs> now, there's stories about Jack all over the world. There's something in us humans that likes someone that kind of appears a little bit slow at first, but they always make the best out of a bad situation. I think there's something in us that really reveres someone that can kind of turn things around. People were telling these jack tales that you hear in the mountains now over in England, Ireland, and Scotland. A lot of those folks packed up their trunks and quilts and headed across the oceans. They also brought their stories. The stories changed just a little bit. There's a, a, a bit of a rougher edge to the mountain versions of some of these stories. But I'm going to tell you one that I first heard from Ray. Well, once there was a fella named Jack. Now, this was a different Jack than the one we've been telling you about today. There's a shortage of everything in the mountains, including names. <laughs> This fella, he's a, he's a big, stout-like boy, and they called him Big Jack. Well, work got mighty hard to find down where Big Jack was, pretty much like today for a lot of folks. And Big Jack decided he was going to go out and seek his fortune. So he got some wood in for his mama, dug up some potatoes, and told her goodbye and headed on off down the road. Now, he walked for a good ways. Boy, he'd worked up an appetite, too. He was hoping he'd find some work that night. He come to where a king lived. He went up and knocked on the door. King opened it, and Big Jack said he is looking for a, a job of work. King said, are you a good hand to herd sheep? Big Jack said he, he reckoned he was. King said, well, I got this here contract. Anybody works for me has to sign it. It says here that the first one of us that gets mad is going to get three strops, three strips cut out of his back long enough to make shoestrings. Does that suit you all right? Well, Big Jack didn't like the sound of that, but he needed the work, and 
He said he reckoned it did, and so Big Jack signed up his name, and King signed up his name, and King sent Big Jack upstairs to bed without any supper. Well, the next morning, first thing, King hollered him out. Oh, there, Big Jack, come on downstairs. Big Jack came downstairs, and King didn't say a word about breakfast. Just took him right out to the corral, right next to the barn. There were all those sheep were. The king, he opened that gate, and he started herding those sheep out, counted them up until he got all the way up to 99, 100. Now, Big Jack, you take these sheep on out to pasture. Well, that's what Big Jack did. He picked about, found him a few little berries, and boy, he's hungry, though. Got back in that evening, the king stood there counting, got all the way up to 100. You done good, Big Jack, now go on upstairs to bed. No mention about supper. Well, this went on for three days. Big Jack is about to starve. That third day, he come in with the sheep. King stood there counting them. 98, 99, 100. You done good, Big Jack. You going upstairs to bed. Big Jack said, King, ain't you going to give me nothing to eat? King said, well, no. I never hired you to eat. I hired you to tend sheep. Are, are you mad? Well, looks like a man ought to be mad. You work them all day, starve them to death. That ain't no way to do. He stomped his foot. Looked like he was about to cuss. The king took hold of him, got out his knife, and cut three big strops right out of Big Jack's back. Remember, this is a story. <laughs> now, Big Jack recollected about that rule, how he had agreed to it, that contract he had signed. So he started on off. He'd broken the contract. He didn't even get paid for the three days of work. He stumbled on off down the road. Now, directly, he met up with Little Jack. That's the same Jack that's in all the other Jack tales we've been talking about. Little Jack noticed him, how he's limping along and Asking what was the matter, Big Jack told Little Jack all about what had happened. So Little Jack took Big Jack to the doctor, told him he'd pay whatever it cost when he come that way again. Then Little Jack went to the king's place. See, would the king hire him? He knocked on the door, and the king opened it, and Jack said, You got any work for me? king said, are you a good hand to herd sheep? Jack said, why, herding sheep? Back home they say I'm one of the best there is at herding sheep. King said, well, I got this here contract. Anybody who works for me has to sign it. We both do. says here the first one of us that gets mad is going to get three strops, three strips, long enough to make shoestrings cut out of their backs. Does that suit you all right? Jack said, King, I hardly ever get mad. <laughs> well, you sign your name, and Jack did, and King signed his name, and then King sent Jack on upstairs to bed with no mention of supper. But Jack, he didn't go to sleep. He snuck back down those steps, went over to that kitchen door, and he peered through the keyhole. He watched that king and queen, watched where they put everything after they're finished eating, all that food. Then he snuck back upstairs. He waited until everybody was asleep. Then he came back down those stairs. He eased that kitchen door open, went in, got plenty to eat, filled his pockets full of bread and salt, and he went on upstairs, slept good on a full belly. Next morning, King hollered him out. Oh, there, Jack, come on downstairs. So Jack, he came downstairs. King didn't say a word about breakfast. Just took him right on out to the corral right next to the barn, opened that gate and started bringing those sheep out. Accountant got all the way up to 100, said, Jack, you take these sheep on out to pasture. Bring them back in this evening. Jack said he would. So Jack took the sheep out to pasture, and long about noon, he started getting a little hungry. So he went over, got him a single tree, got him a big old stump, and whop, 
whacked one of those sheep in the head. He skinned it out, built him up a fire. He roasted that sheep, took out that bread and salt, and mm, mm, he eat on it all day long. Well, that evening, the king stood there accounting the sheep. Not 98, not 99. Oh, now, Jack, one of my sheep's gone. Jack said, yes, I, I was going to tell you about that. I got hungry during the day, so I just knocked one of your sheep in the head. Are you mad? <laughs> no, I don't reckon I'm mad. You're going upstairs to bed. Well, the next day, Jack did the same thing. On the third day, Jack was bringing those sheep in. That king started counting. He only got up to 97. He said, Jack, you're going to break me up this way. Jack said, oh, king, are, are, are you mad? No, I'm not mad. But I don't think you're cut out to be a shepherd. How are you plowing? Plowing. Jack said, well, I'm back home, I'm one of the best there is at plowing. King said, all right, you meet me down here tomorrow morning. And that's just what Jack did. He helped the king hitch up a, a big, fine team of horses. I mean, their withers were just the same exact height. That mane came down on the same side of each of them, the exact same length. They even twitched their ears in unison. They're the best, most beautiful matched pair anyone had ever seen. They got all that harness up onto them, took that plow, put it up onto a sled, and they led those horses down, and King took Jack to a big level field. Showed him where he wanted that plowing to be done. And Jack, he turned in good straight for us till the king left. As soon as that king was gone, Jack let those horses go this way and that. It was some of the first crop circles all around. And, <laughs> and directly, Jack saw an old man come riding down the road on a little jenny, a little donkey. Jack stopped and said, man, look at that thing you were riding. Oh, don't you be making fun of my little Jenny. She's the best I can do. Jack said, making fun? Mommy, I want that thing. How much will you take for it? Oh, you don't want this little old Jenny. I do too. Now, how will you swap it for one of these here horses? <laughs> that old man said, oh... I don't have anything to pay you any boot. Jack said, boot? Why, but Dad, I'd loud you'd want the difference. You swap me even and the deal's made right here. That old man moved faster than he had moved in 55 years. <laughs> he had that bridle and saddle off that little old Jenny. Jack hitched up one of those horses with that bridle and saddle. He was so tall, Jack had to give him a foot and a leg all the way up. That old man got on that horse and took off running. Jack got that little Jenny next to that big fine horse and started in trying to plow. Well, directly, the king come up there. Jack, what, 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 what happened to my big fine team of horses? Jack said, oh, king, I was going to tell you about that. See, I saw this little Jenny coming down the road. I thought you'd like her best as anything, much as I did, I thought at least, maybe not even more. So I just swapped one of your horses for this little Jenny. Are, are, are you mad? No, I'm not mad. <laughs> but you don't need to do any more plowing. How are you at picking apples? Jack said, pick an apples. Well, I know back home you're the best there is. You go on down the orchard, get a basket, get a rope, get a ladder, go on up to the orchard and start picking off apples. I'll be up there directly. Okay, King. So Jack, he went down to the barn. He got him a basket and a rope and a ladder, and he got him an axe. He went up to that orchard, and he cut down three big apple trees. 
He set that ladder up sideways and commenced to picking off apples. <laughs> Directly, the king come up there. Jack, what in the world are you doing? Oh, I'm picking apples like you told me to. Jack, you, you cut down the trees. Jack said, how'd you expect me to pick apples and them away up yonder? I always cut down the trees first. Are, are you mad? No, I'm not mad. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how I want them apples picked. So the king took that ladder, set it up on one of those few remaining apple trees. He got that basket and the rope, and he clumb up that ladder. Jack saw him tie that basket up there and reach hold, the king did, got hold of a limb there, and Jack went over and he pulled that ladder out from underneath that king, left him a dangling there. <laughs> Jack, what in the world you go and do that for? Jack said, King, why don't you tell me how come you didn't give me nothing to eat? Well, I can't feed you from up here. Go down the house, tell the queen, tell her quick, I said to give you something to eat. So Jack, he went on down to the house. <laughs> he walked up onto the back porch right into the kitchen, and Queen was in there, and Jack said, Queen, King told me to come down here and kiss up on you. <laughs> Why, he never done it. She went out onto the porch, and she hollered up to that king. King, did you send this boy down here? I sure did do whatever he says, and I'll do the cooking and cleaning for a year. <laughs> oh, that sounded pretty good. <laughs> she went back inside. Jack didn't look half bad either. She grabbed him up and put a big one on him. She gave him a little something to eat, and then Jackie said he best head on back up to the orchard. And the queen thought she didn't have anything to do all afternoon. King's going to be doing all that work. So she followed Jack up the hill to the orchard. Got up there, and Jack, he put that ladder up underneath that king, and king started coming down that ladder just as the queen got there. Queen said, King, how come you sent that boy down there to kiss up on me? He said, I never done it. Did you kiss him? She said, why, yes. It was certainly worth one kiss for you to do all the cooking and cleaning for the coming year. <laughs> there was smoke coming out of every orifice. <laughs> Jack looked over and said, King, are, are you mad? Yes, I'm mad. I'm good and mad. And he grabbed hold of Jack. Jack grabbed hold of him, and they started rolling, tussling, fighting, kicking, and biting. Jack got the best of it, got out his knife, and he cut three strops right out of that king's back. And that king, he recollected about that contract and how he had agreed to it. So he had to pay Jack for all that work he had done. Jack took that money and he headed back down the road. When he got to the doctor's place, Big Jack was all fixed up. Little Jack paid him and then last I heard, Little Jack, him and his mom are doing right well. Thank you.